Okay. We're up. We're up. 7.15. Gonna roll around a little bit. But basically gonna get my button gear and head on out. We're gonna pack raft the Black River today. I already know what we're gonna put in. We're gonna put in just down there. Phase one. Oh, you know how wet my clothes are, right? They're in my bag. It's gonna be bad. And uh, we gotta check the toe. I'm very nervous about the toe. Look at the bugs. Ooh. Okay, here's the big reveal. Oh man, it feels, feels really good. There's some blood there for sure. I'm gonna leave that on there for the day because it feels way better. Okay, that's the plan. And then when I get home, I gotta like Google what to do. I don't know if this is like, I have to go to the hospital or something to get my toenail removed, but as long as I can walk, I'm gonna be able to finish the trip. If I was like in like day one of a five day trip, I don't know what I would do. Like I would need a helicopter out of here or something. So. Oh my. Look at the sun. Is it possible? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be that we get sun? Oh, you saw me. You saw it. Okay. You know, we don't like to talk about this stuff, but people do go to the bathroom in the woods. I actually made a video of it a while ago. Uh, it's up here, so it's private time. Um, talk with you later. How long do you think I got before it rains again? I'm gonna go with 8.30. I say by 11. I say by 11. I know you guys are thinking, oh Steve, you're so negative. I'm not. I'm smart. There's a difference. For those wondering, these are the Gossamer Gear LT5s. Lightest trekking pole in the market. Lightest adjustable trekking pole in the market. It doesn't actually look that bad to be honest. Like I'll come in there. Looks like it pretty much pumps you out as long as you don't get caught down there. Anyway, we're skipping this section. It looks like in high water, it's all the way up there. So you can imagine what the rest of the place looks like. It must be wild. But today, you know, we're, we don't have any gear. We're by ourselves. 
We've got a pack raft and a life jacket, that's it. We didn't bring any of the white water stuff because we're not doing that today. So let's make our way down to the beach where the sun tanners are, the relaxers. Inflate this bad boy up and see if we can't get somewhere good in a decent amount of time before rain starts. Want one more look? We have a very small walk just up here to the end. I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. Then we're going in. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit overgrown here. You can see no trespassing there. It's just down there. I remember I saw it before. So I got to figure out a way to get around this. Obviously the person who controls that bridge does not want trespassers. It's a little turtle. It's a little guy. Uh, I don't know, he looks... Ooh. I don't know my turtles well, but you know, when I see that pointy tail, I tend to think a little bit of a snapper. It looks like one. But anyway, it's kind of far from water. Hope you're okay, buddy. Time is 9.18, we got the pack raft ready. She's good to go for the maiden voyage. Not gonna film me getting in because you see, look at this uh, drop off here. So this is actually eroding away and a big chunk just fell off. So, see this here? Yeah, that, that's actually falling off little by little. Maybe I'll launch over here. Um, anyway, I just wanna go for a dunk. So I'll get back to you guys when we're uh, on the water. This is kayak life. The GoPro is very close to my face, but it's secure and that's what we need. So we're on the Black River. Um, I don't know anything about it. I've got a map of it, but you have to understand like having a map of a river and like actually being on the river is very two very different things. So my understanding is the water level is very low. You can actually see, I'll show you how high the water has got. It looks like we're, honestly, it looks like it's about eight to 10 feet higher at some points. Um, so I guess this could be just a raging whitewater run in the springtime, which was my plan, but maybe it's almost better that I didn't do it because, you know, it might have been above my skill level. Like when I look at that stuff up there, um, I mean, I could run it. There's no problem. I could certainly run it. Uh, but by yourself, eh, no helmet. Hmm. I don't know, man. Like that's the type of stuff that you read about in the newspaper. So it's best just to leave that there. Um, what we'll do is we'll, we've got a, so we've got a 13 or 14 kilometer paddle and the river is not flowing fast, but it's moving enough that I feel we could make some good time. A little bit of a head breeze. Anyway, I'll show you guys any wonderful sights that uh, come to be. Join me, join me on the Black River. We've had to put the bug net on and 
Uh, just give you guys an update. There is a rapid, I'm gonna paddle with one hand here, uh, right around this corner called Glory Hole. It's called Glory Hole, uh, which is a really weird hole, really, or sorry, really weird name, but uh, maybe they knew I was coming. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Um, probably gonna portage it if it is anything significant, but I thought I'd give you a heads up before we get there in case there's some uh, some drama, you know More drama for your mama Okay, so I can definitely hear it uh, Which makes me think that it's definitely unrunnable. It looks like there's a portage just to the right hand side there I might Might just go a little bit left and see if I can boat scout it um but, you know, running it blind is certainly not an option, so let's just see what, let's just see what it looks like. I don't know if you can see it, but that's Glory Hole, clearly a steep drop off. Um, you can't see anything, I'm not going to get much closer, but it looks like it's a significant drop if you look below it. I don't know if you can see that, you know, it's probably a seven, eight, nine foot drop, so let's portage it. So just along the portage here, someone's got a campsite set up, the pack wrap, a couple chairs. So this is Glory Hole. Which to me actually looks amazing, even in low water. Look at that. Definitely not something you want to do blind, but a little bit of a kickstart for the rest of the river that's for sure look at us fly after glory hole on the map looks like it's a pretty oh wait look at the wrong area yeah pretty flat paddle up until we get to ragged rapids which is about two kilometers away or so so we just uh take our time and relax i guess this little thing right here You guys see it? It's like a little snake or a turtle or something. It is. It's a piece of it's a piece of wood. It's a piece of wood. <laughs> Floating in the vertical direction like a buoy. That's amazing. I was so excited. I thought like, oh, I'm actually gonna get something on video. Anyway, let's just let's just keep going. So I can hear the rapids way up there, but the portage starts right here. And realistically, I'm not running them anyway, so I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna look at them. I'm just gonna head right out into the portage. We, maybe we'll get a better look at them when we're on the portage, but just listening to it. I can tell it's not something that um, We're gonna want to do Here's the first view Looks a little wild to be honest Can't really see what's going on a lot of frothy foamy, but it doesn't look like it's too long. Looks like it's almost over right away We probably could have just gone up and scouted around Anyway, I'm just biting off more than I can chew at this point. Let's just get the hell out of here. Okay, so I didn't realize how far long of a portage was it is, but it's about an hour. See the signs, portage route on each year. These are actually roads to the hunting cabin that's right at the portage. And uh, I just wanted to make a point. So a lot of times when you come to these like crown land or, uh, or non-operating um, provincial parks, what they do is they basically partner with some of the residents or some of the landowners. They provide like access over roads and portages and stuff like that. So 
just be aware that uh, it's it's private property that's being um, granted you access in order to portage and just you know treat it accordingly. Um, just because I was just at that last campsite um, and it's beaten up pretty bad, you know, it's like a whole bunch of stuff there and. I don't know if that's also privately owned or if that's just crown land, but I mean, you can imagine that if someone's letting you camp on their land, they're not going to appreciate you leaving it in that condition. So be respectful. Leave no trace, man. That's really it. Okay. So we're just coming up, finishing the portage. Mosquito activity has picked up significantly here. You can see on my hand. Oh my God. So we want to get back on the water as soon as possible looks like they've installed some stairs here to get down looks like it's a straight up like wicked campsite here oh my god Spugs. here i'll show you that's ragged rapids just the end of it i actually didn't get a chance to look at the beginning of it just honestly it was too hard to get to i wasn't going to run it and the bugs were eating me alive, man. So I'm gonna get back on the water right now. Well, now you know where they get the name, Ragged Rapids. Kind of nice, eh? The river has a very small current to it. Oh, I'm actually gonna hit the wall right now. That's okay. And even if you don't paddle, you move at probably, you know, half a kilometer an hour or something. But it's nice just to rest the uh, the arms and listen. Ooh, now I hear some wind. Hold on, there's something nice up here. So as we come across. Right here, put this in it. Not bad. I've mentioned it before, but the pack raft floats very high, but the pack raft is also inflatable. So you have to be careful in these areas you could be in for you know, a doozy. Hmm. 
Well, my friends, guess what has started? The rain. I believe at this exact moment that to my right is where my car is. Problem is, is it doesn't seem like there's many trails there. And the plan was always to go to the bridge. I just didn't park at the bridge. So we're going to keep paddling. I think it's about three more kilometers. The time is 12.30, so we've been on the river for nine, 10, 11, uh, three hours. My arms are starting to get a little tired, that is for sure. But it uh, should be like another hour or so. Then we exit the river, and then we got about an hour hike to the car. So we'll see how it goes. Well, that's it. The bridge of, bridge of doom. Okay, there's a parking lot up there. I just gotta figure out how to get up there. Oh, there's a spot right there. I'm gonna get it right there. Okay, so it's one o'clock in the afternoon. We left at 9.30, so we're in for, uh, three and a half hours of pack rafting. Yeah, I had to double check. It's been a long day. Um, pack rafting is not like canoeing. You know, canoeing, the canoe tracks very well. That was a haul. I did like, uh, I think I did 15 kilometers or so. I got to check the, the map. But uh, to do that in three and a half hours on a pack raft is, is intense. Like my whole, oh my God. I'm not gonna be able to move this tomorrow. Okay, now then. An update. I'm gonna pack this stuff up. I might actually hide the pack raft like in there or something. I gotta hike about two kilometers to get to my car. Uh, I am gonna try and hitchhike if someone will pick me up, but I highly doubt anybody will. So let's go. I'm actually just gonna leave my pack raft and stuff right there. Be back in like half an hour. I don't think enough people drive by here that would even see it. Or at least I hope they would leave it. Some guy with a chainsaw over there is probably gonna make a mask out of my skin and uh, live through my soul. You know, Texas, Texas style. Oh my God, he hurt me. So in case you're wondering who was nice enough to give me a lift, Ken builds a professional ATV and uh, snowmobile trails. There's his license plate. It's a pretty hardcore ATV uh, ramp. Anyway, all very, very nice people and I thank them so much if you watch this for giving me a ride. Just changing the back of the car and then we're gonna head home. Oh my. Oh my! We made it! Okay, first thing to do, we gotta pick up the kayak before it gets stolen. Where's my phone? Time check. Who knows, I'll let you know when I pick up the kayak.
Do not judge me. Perfect. Thank you. Take care. Currently driving home on the 400. I think what we're going to do is called a uh, post-trip discussion. Except the discussion is going to take place with only me inside my car. Because by myself. <clears throat> okay. First thing to discuss is difficulty. Uh, the trail is not super difficult, as in like elevation up and down or even distance. If you look at my kilometers each day, they're probably around 15 to 20. Um, what can be difficult is the navigation. And when I say it can be difficult in navigation, that's using a map. I used a map for the entire time, except I pulled out my GPS, because I have a GPS now and I did bring it, um, except for when I got off of Wolf Lake to do the portage westbound uh, to Loon Lake. I could not find the trail after that. And as a matter of fact, when I turned my GPS on, I was like, just so gone in the wrong direction. Thank God I turned it on because I would have never got out of there. So uh, navigation wise, yeah, I think that it's uh, pretty important that you bring something to help you out with. Now, that said, the trail is amazingly blazed. Even the overgrown parts, like even all that wilderness section right in between there. I mean, no one's hiked that, obviously, you know, I don't know how long, for years or months or whatever it is, but literally there's a blaze like every meter and it's pretty easy to follow the trail. So that's not bad. Um, my knees are sore. You've seen my toe. I've got that blister on my toe. I'm not sure what that is. I gotta, uh, like, I gotta take a look at that. My shoulders now, oh, after today paddling, those are sore. So just make sure you're in half decent shape before you do something like uh, the Wildlands Traverse. Okay. Second thing we want to talk about is the gear. <clears throat> what worked and what didn't. If you watch the very first episode of this um, mini-series, let's call it, <laughs> you'll see that I threw in my big 10 by 12 tarp at the very last minute. I actually stuck it right on top of my pack. Thank God I brought that. You guys saw the rain that I had to deal with and that can be very disheartening. Like just torrential, soaking, wet. Oh, it just gets you down. So it's tough to keep uh, positive. That tarp, literally both nights saved my life. Um, being in the Z-Packs, that little tiny uh, um, Solplex, it would be really confined for the amount of time I was in there. So thank God I did bring that tarp. Uh, second thing, I got new shoes. Right? I don't know if I told you that or not, those blue ones, I just bought them. I've been on a bunch of hikes with them too, but never, I guess, as long as we did on this one. And obviously I gotta take a look at it because my toe is mangled. There's a problem there. There's a serious problem. It is, like, I'm not joking, I might have to go to the hospital or something. Who has a blister under their toe? I have no idea, I've never had that before. But it's obviously, looks like it's from my toe hitting the end of the shoe. But the shoe, it seems to have like plenty of room, so I gotta look into that. I gotta figure that stuff out. My rain gear, you know that I have the Luke's ultralight stuff. I tore the crotch of the pants significantly, like a 12 inch gash right in my butt. Um, I'm gonna have to get new ones. I'm not gonna repair those. That's actually the second or third time I've been in like, you know, sustained torrential rain. And that, um, rain jacket and rain pants they're not situated well for that they're more like you know they can repel rain or whatever but not not for what uh what we're seeing there so i'm gonna take a look at something maybe get a little something more robust i don't know what's out there actually i gotta take a look as a matter of fact if you know something let me know just make sure it's light i don't carry heavy stuff i carry super light stuff uh something else that i wanted to cover was that pack the hyperlight mountain gear pack so i actually have had that for a couple years it carries really well it really does carry so well. Um, but I noticed uh, a long time ago, one time I brought on a pack rafting trip, and again, you know, you can see it on this trip, it's not waterproof. And I don't know if they're supposed to be waterproof or if they're not supposed to be waterproof, but if you're gonna make a pack raft pack, it should be waterproof. And I have a waterproof pack raft pack, it's the, called the ULA Epic, um, Ultralight Adventure. Uh, company. So if you if you want to check out something really cool, check that out. It's basically a dry bag with a harness. Uh, I brought it on my Baffin Island trip. 
Uh, I bring it on most of my pack rafting trips. I'm not sure why I even decided to bring the HMG one, but I did. And on top of that, the HMG one has very small hip belt pockets. I know they've upgraded it since then, but I don't think I'm gonna spend three or four hundred dollars on a new pack just to get bigger hip belt pockets. I think that that one might just be like, you know, winter time or or big big load, big load, load hauler. No more pack rafting with that uh, backpack. And then probably my final kind of gear issue that I had was I brought the pack raft, but I didn't bring the whitewater skirt because um, I knew I wasn't going to be doing any whitewater. But, you know, it still gets a lot of water inside there. Uh, there's even water dripping off the handles. I haven't really paddled it for, you know, I paddled 15 kilometers today, which is the, probably the farthest I've ever paddled a, a pack raft on flat water in my life. Um, so water continuously drips in it plus it was raining it ended up filling substantially actually with uh, with water so moving forward even if I'm gonna be doing flat water stuff I'm probably gonna bring the skirt just to keep that type of stuff out I think that just about covers it I hope you enjoyed the series and let me know in the comments below if you like this I used to do one video um, for my entire trip even if it was like a 10-day trip if you go back and look at my Baffin Island video like I did eight days solo in the Arctic and just made it one one-hour video this one I broke up into, I think, four. So let me know if you prefer the mini-series style or the full version style. And at the end of this uh, episode, I'm going to release all of them combined in one. Uh, I see that's what other people are doing. It seems to be kind of popular. So um, let me know what you think. So I think that about covers it. I'm going to make my way home. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you're watching this for the first time, hit the little subscribe button. There's a notification button. You can press all those buttons. You can also follow me on my social media channels. They have buttons as well. Press all the buttons you can. I'm Steve Evans and I'll see you on the trail.